I'm Ryan and I play guitar. I'm Brenda and I play organ. I'm Brad and I play microphone. I'm David and I play the drums. I'm Rich and I play the bass. <laughs> I'm Josh and I play guitar. One, two, three. And we, we are black guys and neckties, motherfuckers! We're all a bunch of fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can be. We can totally be assholes. Everybody has their own kind of uh, asshole ways, I guess. And that uh, it's fun really shows. Fun yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know each other's favorite food. We all know each other's favorite flavor of Gatorade. Mm. Know each other's favorite chocolate. Yeah, we need to know each other's favorite sauce. Because when you're eating like crap, you need a lot of sauce. So we make sure everyone has the kind they like. We watch out for each other like that, don't we, Brad? Everything you do, you have to be willing to share with everyone. After a first tour, you just you kind of you get into that mentality, I guess. You get used to kind of everybody doing the same thing because you're you're the only people you know everywhere you go. So yeah, yeah. Basically, in us with six of us, it's like an army. We constitute a rush going indie into it's any like restaurant. fast food place or a restaurant. It's like this wave of people to the front so get me out yeah <laughs> it's really weird because we spend so much time together that when we get back from tour it feels lonely for a few days because you're so used to sleeping next to each other eating with five other people brushing your teeth next to two other people it's like when you get out of jail you know when people go get out of jail <laughs> and they get confused and they just want to go back to jail because they don't know how to live a normal life anymore it's exactly what it's like yeah. i crave this van when i go home i curl into the fetal position and rock back and forth. What's the biggest thing you crave? Do you it hasn't really started yet. We just play way too many shows right now to write songs. We play like we played like sixty shows this year, so we have to take some time off to write music. We've written like one song in the last year. But by next year hopefully we'll write like ten. But yeah, how that actually works when he says we've written one song in the last year, it's been that we've all worked on it together. In the last year, uh, I mean, between the rest of us, we have like a ton of ideas and stuff like that. We're always playing guitar and playing our instruments, so everybody's got ideas. So when we actually get together, the writing process is really quick because we have tons of stuff and tons of material. But it's just finding that time is a little brutal, I guess. So I'll like, that like one. pulling teeth. It's not bad. <laughs> no, it goes with smooth. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's uh, in a lot of bands. I've been. I think we always like bring uh, an idea to the table, fight about it for one practice, and the next practice we figure out what we can do with it, and then agree and like pat each other in the back and are thrilled. It's, right? It's like there's a little hate. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty accurate. And then we embrace yeah, it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it at all. Yeah. Some song like some songs are definitely we we all know that they are fully realized. You know, super solid structure, like solid. Solid riff, solid whatever. Solid, solid. Some of them, yeah, some of them, we, I think we feel like sometimes they're not totally done, but we are happy with them and we love, like, we love them. We accept them the way they are. Yeah, we accept them. <laughs> and we, 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 unconditional love for our crappy songs. And then, uh, and then we move on, yeah. But they're like, especially on Apparition. There's like definitely some fully realized tunes on that album, I think. And then all of the new stuff is, I, in my opinion, super solid. We have to be able to pull it off, and it's kind of hard to play real technical stuff when you're flailing around. So we kind of held back by that sometimes, but uh, it doesn't doesn't <laughs> it doesn't limit us too bad. Yeah, we definitely dumb it down a bit. <laughs> we bog it down. Well, it's a tough balance between live shows and recordings. Uh, I don't know. You just kind of have to pick sides. Right now, we're picking the live side, but maybe later we'll pick a we'll be a studio band and record a Chinese Democracy for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as we've gotten a little older, and anyone that has, that saw any of our earlier shows, like I think we've gotten a lot less manic and a lot more focused on trying to play well. And so, yeah, I can see the band going in that direction. I feel I feel aged sometimes. <laughs> Shut up. I feel, yeah, I feel like I'm aging sometimes and I try and hang on to that energy and, and it usually comes out pretty naturally when I get the makeup on. It feels good. Yeah, it's just kind of, the, the older you get, the more tired you get and the more difficult that it gets to be able to do, put out that much energy, but it, uh, 
some for some reason it doesn't matter how tired or how sore or how sick or how drunk or sober or how sober <laughs> yes <laughs> you stage. you get that makeup on and you turn your amp on and as soon as you hit that first yeah. note like the energy is just there it's always. just it's always it just doesn't matter you always just you always pick yeah. it up and it always happens so it's i don't know it, it just it does it itself i guess if that's a good way to put it like the energy just supplies itself and like i said it doesn't matter how you're feeling you're just you'll pick it up um it's strange because the band started out as a totally alive act for halloween so the whole point of it was to be unleashed and manic and um now that we've stayed together and tried to concentrate on i guess fleshing out our albums and going forward as a band we are focusing more unlike you guys are talking about the technical side, but I don't think this band would be Black Eyes if we completely lost that energy and stopped moving or stopped dressing up for the band. Well, That's that. just a part of this band. It's what it is. So. We'd be really yeah, it might lose boring. its edge. It would be so boring to us. Like, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. Or we'd just be another band, I guess. We'd form different we, see, we see a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of bands. And usually they... They don't look too happy. <laughs> they look sad. Yeah. Or bored. bored. And, or bored. Or yeah. yeah, they don't they don't fully believe in what they're doing or or something like that. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I'm always so happy when I get to play with these guys that that we get to act like jackasses and have fun. <laughs> you know, and it's always going to be like that as long as we're playing together. Yeah. Well, we always thought we always thought that that band was just so cool. And it didn't matter, like, if they were Christian or, like, if they were Buddhist or whatever, if they were atheist. Sometimes, you know, bands are just really good and really cool. And that band was definitely all those things. Yeah, they just, they did something that nobody, that we hadn't really seen before, is what it was. Like, we, you know, being that age and somebody shows up and they're just, like, spitting blood all over the place and singing about really cheesy, campy horror themed stuff like having a vegan nightmare the vegetables are coming for me like you know just super silly things that it's just it was awesome it's totally <laughs> awesome we're just like oh man we gonna we're gonna be those guys for halloween one year it's kind of how it started yeah. <laughs> we're, we you know yeah we dressed up and we we looked like them and our songs kind of sounded like them but it, it, it was a lot of fun yeah. it was a lot of fun and it, it looked we were having as much fun doing it as it looked like they were having up there. Well, I've thought about, like, as musicians, you can influence young, influential people. I guess because, like, when you're, like, a teenager, like, for, like, younger people have always really liked us. Like, we've, you know, like, done really well in the in the teen, uh, <laughs> teen genre. In the, we, we'd be great on the Disney Channel, but, uh... Like, you think about people, like, I remember when I was that age, and, like, the music I listened to was, like, MXPX and Operation Ivy and stuff like that, and it's, like, uh, maybe some of that stuff I don't like anymore, and it's kind of embarrassing, but uh, you like that music. Like, at that age, like, I've never liked a band as much as I liked music back then. So it's, like, because, like, I was obsessing over it, and it's, like, it's cool to feel, like, like wow, these people might be kind of young and still a little naive. Like they, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they like like you more than you like any band. So like it feels really good. Just like see that passion, yeah. Yeah, because we're like jaded. You know, we've seen a million bands, we've heard a million bands. Like, I don't know if I'll ever feel as excited as like I did when I was like 13 or 16 or whatever. Good call. Good answer. Yeah, like as you develop your musical taste, you sort of lose that. I don't know. Innocence. Passion. Yeah, totally. And I think a lot of it too is when when you're that age, everything is kind of an all or nothing thing. Yeah. It's so dramatic and everything's this is the biggest thing that's happening in your life. This is the best thing or the worst thing. It's not like now where you've just seen all that stuff. So it's like, yeah, it's a Tuesday, you know. It's it's another day of the week. Big deal. Exactly. So I think back then it was just like so much more passion about Le being less jaded is, is pretty I mean, much what it comes down to, it. yeah. My favorite animal is an octopus. Why? It because it can swim in the ocean, It and I, I like it a lot.